yeah uh, i think we can begin so uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us this evening so we are just uh, looking at the largest state of public transport in the city with a focus on the metro and uh, looking at what what kind of trade offs are happening in terms of like which mode of transport is getting funding and focus and uh, if uh, the new central sort of kumta is is uh, something that would be a game changer for the city as well uh so uh we have our panelists with us this evening uh, mr ananta krishnan who is a journalist and uh, so he's been covering issues on uh, mobility health and urban development and transport uh he's been with the hindu for a long time and uh, right now he's a freelance journalist uh we have mr ramara who will join us shortly he's a civic and social activist uh, who's also the director of a traffic and transportation forum and he frequently raises issues on uh, the suburban rail system and and uh, other transport issues in the city uh we have ms krishna who is a resident of mogaper and uh, she's been a frequent user of all modes of public transport and especially the metro in the last few years uh we have mr balakumar who is a resident of avidi and uh, he's been a user of buses across cities and uh, he's very passionate about transport and public transport and uh, has a lot to say about like how our bus system compares with uh, other cities uh and then we also have santosh uh, from itdp who's joined us so uh santosh uh, is with itdp and uh, ashuti who is uh, originally slated to join us has been unwell so uh, she just sent in an update uh, that santosh will be uh, taking her place and speaking about the developments in the metro and uh, with regard to transport in the city so i'd sort of like to open the floor asking a couple of questions which start perhaps with mr uh, anand krishnan uh, if uh, if that's okay sir so i wanted to get your thoughts on uh, how do you see the do you see sort of a payoff in the long run with the way cmrl has been attracting ridership and is being operated because uh, every time there are questions around the metro you say like it takes time perhaps like in delhi Uh, all the city's metro systems will reach a certain point where you will get that amount of ridership once the network is complete and so uh, do you see that kind of payoff in the long run with chennai metro as well so good evening to everybody and really happy to be here uh, on this very important topic for our city uh, so i i think uh, in my view as uh, somebody who's lived here for Forty years or so, I think the densification and uh, the urbanization that's been happening in Chennai over time uh, has uh, has come to a point where we have to think of uh, multiple solutions to uh, solve the mobility issue. Uh, which basically, if we don't do that, then uh, I'm afraid that we'll uh, like uh, you know Bangalore. We'll also come to a point where uh, you know our productivity is severely hit. so chennai is generally rated better than uh, other metros because uh, with the exception of delhi perhaps now that uh, you know we we are much better off so uh, i think uh, the metro in the long run is uh, something that will work because uh, like many of the global cities i assume that uh, what chennai is today will be very different uh, let's say 20 years down the line because already we are speaking in terms of chennai changalpet kanchipuram and thirulu so these all these metropolitan areas together form chennai now so this is the reality so metro i think uh, you know although it is a very expensive proposition right now i mean one might argue whether this is the best uh, time to roll out such a system when in fact we have not done the rest of the planning on how this will actually be used I mean, one can argue that question but there is no doubt that in the long run uh, this money is going to uh, sort of uh, you know provide some dividend in terms of uh, various corridors along which uh, people will live and uh, it, it's a given thing that uh, you know our cities will continue to urbanize and the periphery will continue to grow so it's better that we organize this thing right from the beginning uh, since we already decided now to go with the rail system uh, stretching like let's say 45 kilometers in particular arteries that we will plan the rest of the development along with this major investment because it's no small measure that you are willing to spend billions of dollars equivalent like in phase 2 it's something like 63000 crores so when this is the kind of money you are spending 
you might as well devote yourself to the rest of the ecosystem that is required so that we have an integrated, fully functional, modern kind of mobility system. Mobility as a service, you know, the concept which uh, is increasingly being spoken about all over the world. So we can come to our own definition of how that will work the best for us. So if you look at, uh, you know, the latest numbers that I could find, uh, I, how much time I have, I do not know, but I will, please tell me if I'm oh, exceeding. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in 2019, this uh, mobility plan uh, report, you know, comprehensive mobility for Chennai, that report from a consultant, both for CMRL and for CMDA together, that clearly shows that, uh, you know, we have been slowing down in terms of certain ways that we move. Our average speed is going down. And uh, you, you see that uh, there is a drop in the non-motorized transport, uh, you know, levels. And uh, uh, currently what we find is that uh, by that data, what we find is that two wheelers and uh, walking still con constitute uh, almost half of, uh, you know, the trips that people make. And uh, public transport is, uh, you know, about 22% for bus and 5.6% uh, for train. So may not be uh, including uh, CMRL's figures, perhaps. I do not know because 2019, we have completed the system and uh, thereafter we have, uh, you know, uh, people using rail, that rail also. So this rail figure might not be all that accurate, but broadly speaking, this is what we find. So uh, there is a lot to be done in terms of how, to, how we integrate. You mentioned Kumta. So this is something that's been, uh, you know, long in the tooth. We've spoken about it for 10 years and nothing much has happened. And there's not much transparency about the way we go about uh, making policy on various aspects. So uh, I'll, in, in terms of this lack of coherence, I'd like to mention, for example, one thing like take the case of share autos. So share autos, right from the time that CMR started building its system, their executives were saying that it is going to play an important role in, the, in bringing people to the uh, metro rail. So in spite of that kind of, uh, you know, important role that it has, it has not been regularized. It is still an illegal system in terms of the law. So this speaks to the you know, lack of coherence in terms of how we go about uh, building the transport uh, network in the city. Then there's you know, systemic integration in terms of tickets, in terms of information. So these are all the main elements. And I, I, I think that uh, ultimately our city is still hostile to the first and last mile in terms of being able to walk, in terms of able to take your bicycle to a you know, a rail or a bus station. So these kind of things are still happening. So uh, I think these, these aspects have to be looked at. And uh, I, I would stop here at this moment. And uh, as we go along, uh, we might have, uh, you know, more to speak about many of these things. I'd like to listen to the others also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir. Uh, I'd like to bring in Mr. Santosh to talk about uh, the crucial aspect of integration uh, uh, that that you've raised in, in terms of how do you envision the metro sort of slotting into this integrated transport system that uh, we are looking at for uh, Chennai? Like what are the pain points in this kind of integration for the metro with the bus service or any other modes of transport that uh, we, we see in the city? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I'm uh, very happy to be here among the esteemed panelists. Uh, to answer your question, uh, with respect to integration, there are three components to it. One, uh, we need the fair integration. Uh, the ability to pay the fare of any public transport you take, that needs to be integrated. Uh, that's one. Second, there needs to be physical integration um, in terms of space. If you're traveling through Metro and you, if you want to shift to a different service, be it a rail or a bus, uh, the interchange should be very, very convenient for anybody, like uh, uh, be it an able-bodied person or a person with disability, it should be very seamless for them to connect and talk forever, which is not currently in existence right now, uh, from what I can see. The third one is uh, information integration. Uh, if I am planning a trip from, say, Trivandrum to uh, Georgetown, I should be able to have the information I need, uh, irrespective of which mode of travel is available, uh, that can take me through the shortest distance or that can take me to the cheapest uh, fare available and things like that. So. There are three ways to uh, integrate uh, and for integration to happen it becomes very very crucial for these departments to work well together uh, so uh, like uh, mr andrew rightly pointed out uh, establishment of kumta is a good step in the right direction but it's been there in the works for the last 10 years so once uh, uh, currently we see a lot of momentum happening with a dedicated staff members being assigned to kumta with a dedicated budget for kumta this integration conversation might happen sooner than later uh, and that will be very crucial for us to ensure that the city is well connected, not just by metro, but through all modes of public transportation itself. 
thank you thank you so much for your inputs on that uh, i'd like to bring in uh, ms krishna uh, to talk about her experience of using the metro uh, service in the city yeah good evening and uh, thanks to uh, the citizen matters team for the opportunity um, see all through my life i would say i've been using uh, public transport right from school days till uh, college and then office and all but then uh, be it a bus or uh, the initial mode of transport like the electric trains and then in recent years of course the metro i think the me introduction of metro services has been uh, a big boon to all of us or to many of us uh, definitely it has shortened the duration of the long commute and also in comfort right the, though the initial costs have been quite high and uh, but the subsequent uh, revision and reduction in fares has made it affordable at, le uh, at least to the office goers and to the students i would say that and uh, maintenance of the stations and the trains so far it needs to be appreciated uh, it's been quite good of course during the covid we also saw a lot of sanitization happening uh, things can be better though uh, we are not i would only say that we are not enforcing some of the rules that are being mentioned for example you know there is a rule that you say do not eat inside the trains so that's hardly being followed so if that kind of uh, enforcement can be done that will also add because it's an ac compartment and then you can just imagine how it is going to be inside and if there is any spillage cleaning and all that is going to be a problem right and uh, i would uh, also rec request that commuters also should be mindful of the fellow passengers and fellow co commuters because they should know that they are also traveling with them and they should be aware that uh, whatever they are doing is going to affect them like some sometimes they play music so loudly sometimes they eat sometimes they keep their feet on the uh, uh, on the chair i mean on the seat itself which is not really advisable and it is it may cause discomfort to the others especially during covid times we are going to be worried about the spread of infection through contact and things like that one more observation i would say is facilities at the metro could be made uh, at the metro stations could be made uniform for example like i found in vadaparni station there's a wonderful automatic um, sanitizer dispenser available which is extremely good but then that facility is not available in all the other metros you only have a stand and half the time that is not working and uh, sometimes there are no people available to take your scan i mean your temperature as well so if these things could be made uniform that will also help and um, connectivity as ananta krishnan mentioned the connectivity to the last mile is a problem because uh, see initially there are certain places which are really well connected but then uh, i uh, certain places like omr and all that which is just coming up now but there are long stretches and people have to commute for really uh, you know long hours during the day Uh, that can be avoided if you had a good connectivity and especially during the last mile where you still have to take an auto where you still have to take an ola you still have to take a a cab or you know you know for that last bit of 1 kilometers or 2 kilometers that again is creating a problem so if that could be helped i mean the connectivity will definitely help in that direction as well um by and large i would say that metro has really been a godsend to chennai and uh, definitely uh, things will uh, improve in the long run and uh, we are looking forward to many more uh, facilities available and which, which which can help more people in future if not for the current generation at least for the future people they should be able to benefit much much more from you know from these facilities that's all for now i would say thank you we'll come back to you with some questions on your experiences uh, yeah. uh, again okay. uh, so i want to bring in uh, uh, mr balakumar uh, so he's been uh, taking buses in many cities and uh, so i wanted to just talk to him about experience of taking the bus in chennai what are the things that perhaps stop him from taking a bus in chennai has he seen uh, better systems or better services across the city anywhere and his general thoughts on uh, being a bus commuter in the city uh, can you hear me sir am i audible yes yeah yes okay uh, good into all uh, yeah uh, okay a bus is the oldest uh, uh, this thing transportation available presently at chennai i could say that 
uh, bus is well connected throughout uh, chennai if you look at the chennai now only metro and all in recent time it's introduced if you look at the chennai public transport uh, transport systems uh, the vmrts was uh, probably the one uh, railway uh, railway track available the rail community uh, this thing transportation is not well connected throughout the city uh probably the uh, bus alone the bus transport alone the uh, uh, only the public transport system available well connected throughout chennai um uh, in the in the times actually uh, th- that is the only system available okay so okay probably after the metro introduction uh, probably we find uh, um, this would be discarded or the probably the bus commuters would be uh, you know the drastically the numbers will come down okay um okay and now also i feel uh okay uh, commuting by bus uh, again in chennai okay probably i am traveling to all cities i happen to be in all cities for my business trip and all okay uh, comparatively the chennai bus system is good uh, uh, probably in terms of uh, you know um, connectivity um, and all it is very good there are many cities like pune and all uh, probably if if you want to even to use a public transport bus and all probably uh, you, you cannot actually it is not the reason is it's not connected to all uh, this thing all places um all, uh, many reasons such that uh, okay not affordable also uh, the considering that chennai is a better uh, well connected with the bus transport system um okay my point is yeah uh, probably you have to wait for long hours uh, probably you want to reach some destination in particular time uh, which is uh, not at all possible okay uh, as as mentioned uh, chennai is not dense as, as uh, compared like a city like bangalore okay in that situation okay if if you commute if you travel by bus in bangalore yeah it is a very herculean task okay we uh, even i prefer uh, if i go to bangalore i, I uh, go by metro or i travel by metro um chennai um probably yes uh, it's well connected though it is well connected that uh, you know the number of bus- buses uh, the timings all become a problem okay probably uh, okay uh, i could i could state nine and more reasons for that um mainly it is uh, run by the government actually there is no p- private participation in the, in that actually okay uh, probably whatever they they feel like you know whenever they want to um run the bus uh, want to uh, this thing uh, then only probably they do that actually you don't have any control over the timing uh, absolutely you know if you board in one bus probably uh, that bus will not you know uh, it, it will not go actually probably they say that you have to switch out the next bus okay so these are all the uh, uh, main issues uh, with the um chennai bus facility uh, probably if, if it could be privatized no not uh, completely privatized probably if you give a participation of private participation like 50 50 if you go to city like you know trichy okay where you don't find such difficulties okay there again um, you get private buses uh, there you don't uh, need to depend on uh, public tra- uh, sorry the um, government buses okay so that since there is a private participation there probably the timing and all they keep up the timing uh, so uh, that is the one with chennai uh, probably it has to be uh, there should be equal uh, private opportunities should be 50 50 should be privatized uh, with that we can improve the timings and all otherwise it's well connected mm. okay. um, probably you, there are yeah yeah I will uh, take up this whole issue of uh, chennai not having enough buses i uh, welcome mr krishnan and santosh to weigh in on this uh but i think chennai is about like, roughly 2000 or so buses short even with the procurement of about 600 odd new buses uh, that has been sanctioned recently uh so when you look at the investment that sort of goes into the metro no questions asked while uh, the mtc has been sort of uh, struggling to face out older buses procure new buses make the buses more accessible uh do you think this is sort of becoming a zero sum game uh in terms of say one mode of transport getting all the bulk of the attention and focus uh especially considering that the state government is sort of bearing the deficit that uh, the cmrl is facing as well so could this uh could uh i mean is is the bus service sort of being hurt because of the current focus on the on the metro so to say 
not really not really uh, okay uh, as, as we, uh, we are okay we, we are discuss we have been discussing on the metro it is not well connected now also probably another uh, 10 years uh, probably it takes another cmrl probably the metro to be connected with the entire cover the entire city okay till such till such time we cannot phase out the bus system we cannot avoid the bus mtc transport okay okay it is I, i could say that it is not uh, well managed actually the mtc maintenance and all it's well managed being a public being a, being operated by a government uh, body actually uh, in that case if you allow a private participation you, you get a better um, um, i could say a, um, a better services actually to the public Thank you, sir. Thank you for your inputs on this. Uh, so, yeah, thanks. Uh, Mr. Anand Krishnan or Santosh would like to weigh in on on sort of the focus on the metro and uh, how the NTC also needs this sort of attention and and investment uh, in the system, especially considering that more people use the bus service in the city vis-a-vis -vis the metro, at least at that. Uh, you want to go first, or shall I, Santosh? Um, go ahead, sir. I can go next. Okay. so no so in regard to what our colleague has said uh, mr gopal so the thing is that uh, in the recent budget the dmk government has said that they want to shift to a gross cost co contract model in which they will invite somebody to run the bus service and they will uh, set the parameters by which they will pay so when uh, this is there i mean it's it's a, it's, a, it's a big change if they are, they actually get around to doing that because in uh, in the dmk's uh, scheme of things always nationalized bus transport has been a matter of pride so they are now uh, slightly deviating from that and uh, coming up with a new system which, which uh, you know is is something revolutionary from their point of view and it might uh, you know lead to actually a good uh, service if they are able to keep a control of the operations so which is very which is a very big if because uh, when private sector takes over they are uh, interested in maximizing their returns from that uh, particular contract so it has to be very carefully managed so we will have to wait and see how this works out we don't have the details yet on what is going to happen but that on the one side even under mtc the point is that we have not grown the uh, you know bus network in chennai so it is static at about 3500 buses for many many years now and in spite of the fact that the city has grown the number of people have uh, increased in the suburbs and uh, they are, they have chosen some lucrative corridors in which they are able to operate like uh, for instance omr where a lot of buses are running or uh, you know to pundamalli that side and uh, you know the, these kind of sectors are uh, what holds their focus they connected to some termini broadway coimbatore that, that sort of thing so the the important thing is that uh, this bus service and the train service don't have to compete so it is a misnomer to think that you know they are in competition they are not so the bus has to bring people to uh, you know certain from their uh, local areas to some mass transit uh, you know system like either the suburban rail or uh, mrts or metro so the fact that this has not happened so far is because of the ownership issue the uh, state government is interested only in the bus system and the central government is interested only in its own rail system so the two have never really met so this is uh, to the detriment of all those who want to use these things so this has to change so unless this changes uh, you know there will be a competition like uh, if uh, anna sale has uh, a cmrl uh, train running you have buses also running there uh, you know in large number so basically it defeats the purpose so we have to work out the optimum i'm not saying that you withdraw those buses but i'm saying that you have to work out the optimum in fact they have to radially go into places where people are living so and people are working so people want to use mass transport and then go to those places using the buses so we have tried so many things like they tried small buses which is something of a stunted system because they never really took it seriously and uh, the admk government dragged its foot on it they did not uh, implement it for a long time with a lot of pressure then you know finally they came up with something and uh, you know this this issue has plagued uh, chennai for a very long time so this has to change but uh, i am glad to see that vaishnavi is here i think on the uh, you know conference so what has happened very recently is that uh, they were able to get an injunction in the high court saying that buses should not be purchased unless they are able to see to it that it meets the needs of the disabled so this is adding a completely new dimension to chennai's bus system so you are, this uh, uh, the uh, the mtc has so far resisted you know this idea that they will buy low floor buses 
which are more expensive and uh, you know which of course are more comfortable they meet uh, universal sort of requirements including those of the disabled they have not taken this very seriously so uh, in fact when ashok leyland was producing uh, this low cost non ac model called the jan bus which is a relatively low floor bus may not match your volvos but still something which is cheap and we should have done better than you know the kind of uh, trucks that they run as buses in chennai you know it would have done better but they were not willing to do that though this bus is manufactured here and to sold to other corporations around the country so this is actually the reality lived reality of the commuter in chennai so this has to change and uh, and we have to have uh, sort of feeder buses going into the residential localities there is this idea that uh, you know the buses have to completely pay for themselves right from day one otherwise they are incurring a loss and uh, you know this this sort of talk has been there for a very long time this is also not helpful at all because buses uh, they serve a very different uh, sort of purpose also you know they take people to various commercial places where business happens these people go there because the buses are available so uh, what about the multiplier effect of uh, you know these uh, transport modes is that factored into this calculation so that's the question so uh, th these these issues uh, are very central to the bus operations in chennai and uh, i i think we have to move towards comfort now for instance buses you know universally it is well known that they have an image problem so only people who are not well to do uh, go by bus this has been the traditional stereotype that somebody who takes a bus hasn't really done well for himself i think somebody in the uk said that some conservative and our own uh, you know prime minister when he participated in one of those meetings abroad he said that the natural aspiration for uh, a person is to move from uh, you know a bus to a two wheeler and from a two wheeler to a car that's the aspiration so basically this reinforces kind of uh, prejudice we have against public transport in this country so which doesn't help at all so and if you give a very comfortable air conditioned bus which has got let's say wifi and uh, you know it's very nice then you have to pay more otherwise you can't use that bus that is the again the social idea that if you have an expensive good system it is not meant for the common person you know all the cars are very comfortable they are air conditioned they have uh, entertainment you know the, <clears throat> you are very comfortable sitting in your own car whereas the public uh, offering is uh, you know some generations behind when that is the case it's very difficult to grow uh, public transport so we have to uh, focus on these perception issues also and that's we a campaign saying that things can be better the bus can be better now, of course the metro is very good but like i said because the metro is very good it's expensive you know they don't like to make it cheap you you can't use the train whereas nowhere abroad uh, is it like that i mean if you go to london or if you go to paris or wherever you are still able to use it much cheaper than you would to operate your own car or you know personal vehicle so i think these these are central issues and uh, the bus system certainly has to grow Uh, you know perhaps santosh can tell us about uh, you know their own itdp has its own calculation of how many uh, buses should be there as a ratio to the population so from that perspective where we should go from here on so i think these are some of my thoughts uh, you know from mr gopal's ideas thank you thank you sir very well said uh, about the fact that we need better bus infrastructure in the city itself um, just to state some stats like uh, Uh, like you rightly said, we only have about three thousand five hundred buses in the city, of which only three thousand two hundred and fifty are operational at any given time on the road. So uh, that is catering to a ridership, a daily ridership of about twenty-eight lakh population. Uh, this is as per the MPC data itself. While the CMRL metro rail is only uh, catering to about one lakh population per day. So when there is a, this, is, this is the case, if the investment is keeping on getting pumped onto the CMRL uh, itself and the buses being neglected, then we'll obviously see a dwindling ridership. and uh, uh, just to give another statistic in 2014 with a very similar number of buses i think even uh, lesser like we had about 2900 odd buses uh, in the city we had a ridership of about 50 lakhs per day uh, in 2019 pre covid it was about 36 lakhs and today it's standing at 28 lakhs so this kind of a dwindling ridership was also a reflection on uh, very low investment towards bus services itself uh, as a result the quality of service also going down like you have uh, crowded buses you have to wait for a long time Uh, and such issues are there, which are driving people away from the bus bus system itself. Uh, while MTC uh, uh, is doing a lot of uh, new things to uh, make it more attractive, like uh, launching the bus tracking app or making uh, bus recruitment. Uh, still, the service level needs to improve for that to happen for to uh, for us to attract more population towards the buses itself. 
on the metro rails uh, 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 i think mr gopal said that uh, with a wider network it might cater to a larger population and uh, slowly steal away the bus uh, uh, ridership itself but even in a developed country like uh, a city like london uh, with over 1000 kilometers of rail network uh, even to date the bus ridership is uh, significantly higher than the uh, metro ridership so it's not like we can uh, move to move away from bus to a metro they need coexist uh, right next to each other and for chennai's current population we need about 7000 buses in the city to, for it to cater uh, in a very comfortable pace uh, like 5 minutes uh, every 5 minutes you'll have a bus you'll not have a crowded bus for that benchmark to be achieved we need about 7000 buses in the city which is not the case right now we have about half of it thank you just the another issue that i wanted to raise about the pricing uh, that has come up where uh, uh, people are sort of getting priced out of certain modes of transport because of the fix, fixing of the fares like for example the metro itself is priced too high one of the highest in the country so that sort of significantly hampers say people being able to switch between different modes for now that you consider that there is the free travel uh, scheme for women in buses but there's no such thing in the metro so you can't transition between modes of transport when you have such different uh, sort of schemes and sort of subsidies and other uh, things that are going on so how can something like this be addressed especially now that mr anand krishnan pointed out like how different agencies are in charge different governments are looking at these transport modes uh, so uh, how do you tackle a problem such as this uh, this goes back to the previous point i was mentioning uh, earlier about the uh, fare integration uh, for for me to be able to travel in the city respect of which mode i am taking i should be able to get from point a to point b uh, in a very similar fare like the different modes of public transport should not compete with each other even in terms of fare uh, and that's how it works in many uh, developed uh, cities like singapore london everything uh, the cost of traveling from point a to point b on public transport should be similar and the level of service should also be similar currently like many people have pointed out metro offers a higher standard of service and hence the cost seems justified and mtc seems to be of a lower standard and hence uh, the low cost seems to be working out but we should mtc should aspire to offer a service a level of service that's equivalent to metro and metro should also aspire to make it as affordable as mtc in that so they need to attain that equilibrium for everybody to find all public transport modes attractive so that you don't find a transferring between one mode to another mode a hassle but uh, a choice that is very easy to make and that can be made possible through something like a common mobility card that the city can issue for the citizens and uh, uh, integration at the department level can help it out so that, that's an idea that's being mooted but i think there's some resistance in terms of reducing the fare that we've seen with cmrl over the years despite the fact that you know this is something that could instantly increase their ridership uh in the city so uh that is something that i sort of found confounding but uh, they perhaps have their reasons uh for doing so uh i also wanted to raise the issue of the brts in chennai to mr anand krishnan uh so this was an idea that uh, that really sort of gained some momentum with a bunch of public consultations and uh, all of that taking place uh, just before covid so uh, do you see something like that helping the integration faster uh i i i don't know whether a brt system is feasible for uh, uh, areas other than the and uh, you know omr and you know uh, distinct arteries like that but i think uh, so to speak you know we we have uh, that, that bus has left the stop because because we have to do that in some smaller towns for instance you know where it might not be justified to invest heavily in a rail system because it simply won't uh, have that kind of ridership so in those places where uh, sort of segregated uh, you know travel uh, this thing uh, possibility using a brt would be very good now this is this is eminently feasible because uh, if you take something like bogota you know i had the opportunity to use that system so it is uh, actually works as good as a train and uh, it's very fast and uh, you know it can be much cheaper the fares can be much cheaper because investment is low so we can certainly think of that uh, in growth corridors which are coming up further 
I mean, if we decide that, uh, you know, Metro is catering to the, you know, the KTCC area, so to speak. And then, uh, you know, the smaller towns, like, for instance, Coimbatore and, uh, you know, Trichy and all that, there is no need to really have, uh, you know, metros over there, or Madurai, for instance. You can have uh, BRTs there, so which, which uh, is eminently feasible. But I, I don't know if, uh, you know, the respective, you know, lobbies are strong enough to, you know, have their way. So it's, it's the rail that's more attractive. So everybody wants a metro rail because it's, it's really attractive to say that I have a metro rail in my city. So it may not exactly fit the mobility requirement, but that's the way it's going. I, in fact, this is very surprising. I went to one of the blogs that keeps tracking uh, metro rail progress. And I found uh, so many cities in India are now working on metros. So whether or not it's really uh, you know, indicated for the kind of population that they have for, for the traveler uh, profiles that they have and you know so i i, I mean i my personal view is that a big city like ours uh, you know in chennai can uh, benefit from uh, metro but uh, i think brt is it, it's you sort of missed the bus let's say it should have been uh, uh, those those lobbies were not uh, strong enough to say that okay let's try it somewhere and uh, you, we have seen what happened in delhi <laughs> for instance you know it was there and uh, it was working but uh, there was a huge campaign against it, in which the media also participated. They were against the BRT. So ultimately, it led to the scrapping of that system. So which is uh, really a sad thing. Because Delhi is ultimately, it's a VIP city and you know policy city, and everybody likes to have their own car, and there are safety issues and things like that. So I think the whole thing got totally complicated. And uh, congestion was, <laughs> the people started saying, why are you segregating so much space for, uh, you know, the bus? Although that's carrying a lot many more people that are on the other side of the road in the cars. But uh, they didn't win the, you know, sort of thought battle on that. So uh, the people tried and they lost. So uh, I think from that perspective, I've always been thinking that if you went first with a plain old bus system, good buses which keep running, then, uh, you know, even that works well. You don't have to have a you know rail system uh, right on day one. That might come after ten years, but uh, when it is really want uh, warranted or uh, you know uh, it, it is useful. But the plain old bus system really works for everybody. You you don't have to invest heavily. Uh, you know it will use the space available. You can replace the uh, you know buses as and when you require. It's much low cost. So these kind of things uh, you know uh, ha have not been gone into. And uh, like I said, you know it's ultimately it's a question of who has influence in policy making. And uh, in spite of uh, very valiant efforts by many colleagues in favor of the bus, uh, it lost out. So now what we can do is to plug the bus into the rail system and see whether it will work well and uh, whether it will radiate into the residential localities and actually make it useful. And th that's, that's the long and short of the BRT system, I think. Although it's, it's a very promising system. Chennai has missed the bus, so to speak, on the BRTS. So, uh, sir, uh, if we look at uh, the role of Kumta, uh, anyone uh, who, who wants to weigh in on this, in terms of how things stand currently, like we are too far down the route with the metro uh, to really like turn the clock back or make any changes as such. And like you said, we have missed out on in making some improvements to the bus system at certain points. So now, with as things stand, uh, what should be the main agenda items for Kumta to to sort of integrate the various modes of transport uh, that uh, is present in Chennai. Yeah, I think- Maybe uh, Santosh wants to do this? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, like I mentioned earlier, I think uh, uh, the fair integration needs to happen um, for the citizens to use all the services quite equally. Uh, second, the physical integration. Um, like we have many examples where uh, uh, the CMR station might be there and the nearest bus stop will be like a half a kilometer away. It's not there, they'll integrate it in the station itself. Uh, so such kind of uh, problems need to be addressed. And also there are certain multimodal hubs like the, say Gindi or uh, Washman Pet where you have all three modes coming together, the rail, the metro uh, uh, on the bus together. So uh, such uh, places can be redeveloped in a certain way that the transfer just happens within inside the building uh, and the user don't have to feel like they're stepping out of one mode to step into another mode. So that kind of integration will help a long way uh, forward in Kumta's agenda. And I think it's also important that uh, Kumta works towards uh, so one, we have, we've been speaking a lot about the competition between say MTC and CMRL, but another uh, factor to consider is how there are certain flyovers being built along the transit corridor itself. Like for example, the, I, I've seen recent proposals about, from the highways department that says 
we are planning for a, a flyover, a bunch of flyovers or expressways in along Anasalai or uh, along um, OMR itself, like uh, where uh, Metro Corridor is also proposed. Such contradiction is only uh, going to further add to the misery because flyovers directly benefit cars. It's not even benefit, benefiting buses because most buses can't go on flyovers. They have to, in order to service the stops, they need to go under the flyovers. So it's a, 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 it's an infrastructure that's specifically meant for cars. It's not even for other users. So su such kind of investment needs to be uh, rationalized to a large extent and stopped wherever they can, so that there is no uh, competition between private vehicles and public transport itself to start with. That that would be a bigger challenge for Kumta to tackle going forward. Also, just to add to the point on integration, I think uh, Singapore, you mentioned, Satosh mentioned Singapore earlier. So uh, when, when I used that system once, it, it was very surprising that if you use the bus all through the travel, uh, you know, your travel uh, uh, itinerary, then you end up paying more for the bus fare than if you actually switch from the bus to the nearest, uh, you know, train station. So you use the rail for part of the journey and the bus as a connector. So then your bus fare actually to use that uh, segment is lower. So this is the kind of uh, thing that actually attracts people, you know, because it then shifts the person from the bus to the more optimal thing of using the train where it's available. So uh, this sort of uh, integration is something that, uh, you know, we should be working on, I think. So uh, you know, we, since it's a greenfield thing for us, we are only now doing it. So we should think of innovative ways in which people can be incentivized to use the better mode when, uh, you know, they are traveling. So this is just a point that struck me. Uh, I would actually like to bring in Vaishnavi to to speak on on this current state of various modes of public transport, how accessible and inclusive they are. We've done some pieces on these issues, and uh, Vaishnavi has contributed hugely to uh, all of these uh, the discourse around this. So I wanted to uh, bring in Vaishnavi, if you can hear me, to sort of highlight what are these issues that transport corporations should be aware of and work on actively to fix, to make these uh, modes more accessible, more inclusive and welcoming for everyone who wants to take public transport in the city. Hi. <clears throat> so, um, really speaking, if you're looking at people with uh, locomotive disability and they're the people who uh, face the most restrictions when it comes to freedom of movement, uh, you're looking at... Uh, really speaking, only the metro. Uh, so uh, it's a little paradoxical because uh, most of our battles as you know, Disability Rights Alliance, the longest battle has been actually with Chennai Metro. Um, but realistically, that's the only transport, really speaking, public transport at least, uh, that uh, a lot of uh, our uh, colleagues who use wheelchairs or who have locomotive disabilities can even use in the first place. Of course, it begs the question that, you know, how does a person even get over there? The answer is um, really speaking, if you're looking at uh, uh, public transport, uh, if you have a locomotive disability, uh, you are dependent on uh, four wheelers and uh, Depending on your disability, maybe you can manage with a three-wheeler. Now, uh, that automatically means a lot of expenses. Uh, Satish is over here, um, uh, and he, he will probably share with you exactly, you know, how much of his salary goes in, in just, you know, taking a four-wheeler and how he's waiting, really speaking, for the metro to expand because it has really opened up lives for so many people. As far as... Um, buses go. <clears throat> uh, now, the sad thing is that, uh, really speaking, we've lost out on opportunities. Really speaking, today, we should have been uh, able to board any bus in Chennai, because it would have taken, you know, from 2005, going by the procurement rate of, uh, you know, MTC, it would have taken that long to replace all the existing buses with buses that a disabled person or even an elderly person can use without difficulty. And uh, instead, we are only now, you know, back to square one. It's literally, this iteration has happened three times. It happened in 2006, with Justice A.P. Shah's order. It happened in 2016 uh, with uh, Justice Sanjay Kishan call, and it has happened now again. 
uh, and uh, in each case, MTC has, you know, managed to wriggle out and, you know, kind of uh, present, you know, us with a fait accompli of, you know, worse and worse buses. It's like there's not a single bus which a disabled person, uh, you know, on a wheelchair, for example, can use in the first place. Uh, and if, if uh, you know, the government had really taken it seriously, taken Justice A.P. Shah's order seriously uh, in 2006, by now, any disabled person, uh, you know, on a wheelchair would have been able to catch any bus in Chennai um, uh, without having to figure out and, you know, say, okay, it's only one bus out of, uh, uh, you know, 3,000, which, uh, you know, happens to be accessible and that too with really, really high lift. Uh, instead, they would have had, uh, you know, uh, accessible low floor buses uh, available everywhere. And this means that we've lost out on, you know, 15 years of progressing accessibility. Uh, and it's going to probably take another 15 years. And it really saddens me because the person who filed, uh, uh, you know, the PIL, uh, our colleague Rajiv Rajan, uh, has lost more than 15 years of his life um, just because uh, transport corporations aren't willing to do the right thing. Um, railways um, are a challenge. Uh, recently, um, there's been uh, uh, an agency which has uh, done a decent job of, uh, you know, making an already, you know, somewhat uh, uh, hostile uh, a railway station somewhat accessible and a little bit you know more usable for a person with disability uh, their solution for the biggest problem which is you know how does somebody you know manage those three steps into a train uh, is to provide a kind of portable ramp um, that's been tested out and uh, uh, it it requires a little bit you know of a tweak uh, because um, it fits only one coach in the entire train instead of, you know, any coach. And uh, based on our experience with um, airlines particularly, <coughs> you would have seen, you know, uh, people keep cribbing about how, you know, uh, nowadays uh, people just send uh, elderly parents, etc. Uh, on a wheelchair because, you know, um, it's, it's just simpler and, you know, uh, uh, you cut through the queues and, you know, if you're in an unfamiliar place, it's simpler. We do not agree with that. Maybe some people are do, using it for such a, you know, purpose. But in a domestic uh, scenario, uh, there are people, for example, who do have some mobility, uh, but who cannot walk major distances. Uh, then you do have another population who can walk uh, longer distances, but who find climbing steps difficult. And then you have the third group of people uh, who uh, just, you know, can use a wheelchair and need to transfer from wheelchair to the seat. Uh, and these are three different groups of people. So really speaking, that's one suggestion that if we ever get to meet the Chennai DRM, uh, uh, we will be, you know, suggesting to them that look, uh, you know, have this portable ramp, uh, which is, you know, some kind of solution, at least it's an attempt at such time that we can have level boarding in, in railway stations the same way that we have level boarding in a metro, in theory. But we will be suggesting to them that, you know, at least this portable ramp can be used for these different groups of people to board because not, you know, at least the groups of people who belong in, you know, the first and the second group who have some amount of mobility, who, you know, don't need a wheelchair inside the coach, uh, who can manage in a regular toilet, at least those groups of people will have a safer and more comfortable way of getting onto the train instead of just ditching that entire process and, you know, going for flights instead. <coughs> yeah, uh, somebody had mentioned, uh, you know, the cost of low floor buses. <coughs> and I just wanted to flag one thing. I mentioned it in the comments earlier, and that was that, uh, uh, I read somewhere and I'm still trying to find that, you know, and keep that because it is a valuable bit of uh, uh, valuable reference uh, that uh, the cost of a low floor bus uh, in India is, I think, uh, what I read was something like, you know, three times uh, the similar cost in uh, different countries. And it's a kind of irrational, uh, you know, cost. 
and uh, uh, that really you know kind of makes me very wary of this whole uh, gcc system but uh, actually if you really think um, there are so many technologies like for example in india we have this strange uh, phenomenon of electric buses being made high flow uh, the natural way of uh, using a, a a low floor uh, uh, of using an electric bus is uh, uh, given you know that it has less components is is to make it low flow instead we have uh, you know companies which instead of innovating and you know thinking a little bit out of the box are you know literally taking uh, you know the one technology which is your internal combustion engine technology and you know using the same model uh, for uh, uh, low flow buses which is completely different technology altogether and uh, those are issues which uh, sadly aren't getting discussed but to come back to the cost of the low flow bus one is of course that in india for some reason it is more expensive than more more expensive than it should be sometimes i wonder if it's because the roads are bad and you know the uh, uh, bus companies like mtc don't have the in in you know in house capability to repair those buses and therefore because the roads are bad etc the maintenance costs are higher etc or um whether it's it's just uh, you know companies just doing whatever they want as anybody even try to figure out why the bus is you know uh, as expensive as it is and secondly uh, you see we are thinking and using transport and you know transport corporations and they're making a profit when is the last time any of these transport corporations made a profit as far as i know i think only bangalore has uh, managed to make you know at least break even <clears throat> i mean our transport corporations have never made a profit and that's okay i mean if you're really looking at facilitating and helping people i think transport should be as free and open as possible at least within you know uh, an urban environment and um, uh, so why this a uh, difficulty and this uh, you know uh, talk of cost especially when it means that uh, going in for the kind of buses that mtc has been going in for 15 years despite the law and against the law uh, it means that you know more than 15% of the population which would use that public transport is not using that public transport and how is it that as a society we are okay with excluding 15% of the population and uh, you know kind of confining them to a kind of house arrest because that's exactly what is happening so yeah i rambled a little bit but uh, uh, yeah, satish the pertinent points that you know that need to be repeatedly raised unfortunately for anybody to take note uh, i'll i'll begin mr satish has raised his hand yeah, uh, yeah. on his experiences Uh, yeah, hi, hi. Good evening. This is Satish from Chennai. So I have been a person with disability. I have been traveling mostly through motorized wheelchair. So wherever I go, I need to take my motorized wheelchair. So that becomes a, another hurdle wherein public transport is not at all accessible, other than metro, at least for extent of ninety percent. But while going for uh, private cars and auto, again it has been the biggest hurdle wherein the cabs are not being accessible. And nowadays, as per recent rules. the booth space has been completely reduced so traveling through a car also is even though it is expensive we are not able to travel alone maybe auto up to a certain extent we will be able to travel i don't know the reason why all the uh, taxi cabs the booth size has been reduced so this has been one of the thing and uh, the biggest problem in accessibility is that uh, wherever i go any infrastructure or accessible transport is not there so whenever at possible i try to travel by metro but even though i am able to travel independently a uh, few places i am being uh, required of help that is from traveling from a car or auto i need to get over open my wheelchair and move to a, a wheelchair to move around in those places uh, metro rail is not being able to support with a support person there they do not know how to handle a person with disability even though they are just pushing a wheelchair they are not able to know how to 
properly push a wheelchair inside the train, there is a gap between the train and the uh, platform of the metro. Uh, maybe two inches height will be there and the gap will also be. The person who is able to support, they are just trying to push the wheelchair, but they are not trying to just tilt the wheelchair and push it inside. So they do not have the basic training also. And also the gap, what I mentioned is, uh, it is a big, one of the biggest challenge for many people, I think, maybe in future or now, because the wheelchair front wheels might get stuck into that gap and there is a possibility of even getting an accident on it. And also, uh, maybe people with a visual impact are using walking sticks or people with uh, senior citizens are using walking sticks. There is a risk that the walking sticks can get uh, stuck into that gap or even a child, uh, their legs can get stuck into that. So these issues can be rectified by Metro. And then also there are many other issues like uh, ticket counter or the barcode scanning or AFC gates. These are all not fully accessible for a person with disability. But still I agree that uh, while compared to any other modes in transport of Chennai, Metro is being accessible and I'm happy for it. But still it has not been covered to all areas of Chennai. Maybe it has been, as of now, only part of the Chennai has been covered. But phase two is coming up. But still, South Chennai has been uh, lacking for uh, metro, I feel that. Because the Velichetti Tambaram Road metro is not being connected fully. Earlier, it has been to be connected through Mono and again, many other challenges instead of the government changes, everything. Uh, I have been uh, raised at the online petition in the year 2019. And after that feasibility, a study has been uh, started for that metro. But still, again, the project is being on hold. I feel that Velichetti to Tambaram is one of the uh, main routes to be connected of South Channel because it will be connecting Medavakam. From there, many people can take a route towards uh, OMR or towards Tambaram. This will make an interchange in connecting two phases of metro, Airport Vandalo and OMR. So in that way, it will be able to connect GST Road and OMR. So this has been one of the uh, requested metro route, I feel. So I hope the government will take forward in that. And uh, as like Vaishnavi told, uh, almost 15 years we have been fighting for a uh, public transport accessibility, but still we are not able to get it. So I feel that the government should focus more on uh, public transport, eco-friendly transport systems, other than uh, building more and more bridges. Because the more and more you build bridges, Again, the person has to go and stand in another signal, another junction. But when you focus more on public transport, maybe accessible buses or metro, fully accessible or hanging rail, some kind of transport, uh, you completely change it to an eco-friendly environment and the roads will be more and more freer. The more number of buses you provide, the more number of people will travel. Why people are not traveling in buses is that there are not uh, proper buses and timings. It is the biggest issue or more crowded. Almost like Santosh told like that 7,000 buses are needed in Chennai. But as of now, only 3,000 buses approximately are there. So it's less than 50% I feel. So once you have more and more buses and uh, this kind of public transport, I think will be very good. And in the long run, uh, the government should not think that they are spending only for uh, MTC or transport. Overall, if they uh, plan it and use the resources properly, I think it will be in a good way. They don't need much of land acquisitions and more and more expenses related to it. I think IDDP uh, earlier uh, concentrated on DRTS also, but still now that has not happened. And I, I hope that it will not happen at all because many places bridges have come, many places metro has come. So I think uh, IDDP should uh, recommend the government in providing more and more public transport to the uh, society other than building bridges. So I think that is much required. And uh, recently, hanging bus system has been launched in uh, uh, Delhi. I think this should come more places because that will uh, occupy only less number of spaces uh, for building it. And maybe the cost price, I think, will be lesser than Metro also. And uh, like I said, some of the people told that like, uh, Europe has been provided free public transport. You can uh, go for that kind of system wherein you can attract more people to the public system. Uh, like that, the people on the road can decrease the traffic, vehicles, pollution, etc., 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 all connected through it. Uh, I think these are my one of the biggest points. And also having a low floor buses will not only help a person with disability, maybe more than 50% of the people nowadays are old age or some kind of disability or a person with a pregnant ladies are there. 
So this will also attract more people to the uh, public transport system, I think. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your experiences with the uh, commute in the city. Uh, just sorry, just for one point. Yes, yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, the as a person with disability, uh, I've been forced to use on a private car or auto. But if I've been using a public transport, uh, the cost of my transport will be just five times lesser than what I'm using now. Almost now per month, I'm spending around ten to twelve thousand or fifteen thousand per month on transport alone. Okay, if you have an accessible, proper, eco-friendly transport, my transport charges will be less than thousand rupees or thousand five hundred. So you can see how much uh, trans transport cost I'm incurring, and also uh, for many persons with disability, they don't have a job also. Then how will they be able to uh, spend this much money? How will they be able to go and get their opportunities in job or other things? Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Satish. Uh, I'd like to bring in Mr. Ramara, who's uh, joined us. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, am I audible? Uh, Madam, sorry, I could not join the right time due to my some no, preoccupation. No. Uh, first, I, I could not hear of you. Still, as a public point of view, and also a senior citizen age at about 81, I would like to have a unidirection, my views only. Uh, and later on, I will hear uh, I recorded my wow, new views. See, the, the topic of the day is CMRL uh, is a white elephant. It is a need of the hour. It was late. And uh, now uh, phase one is over and uh, phase two is coming up in various directions connecting the city. See, we, we badly need the public transport, not the, you know, city is growing too much and, and the two-wheeler is unmanageable and also uh, cars, uh, the number of cars going up, there is no check. In, in, if you want to really check on this, you should develop the public transport. What is public transport obtaining today as on date in Chennai? It is a very bad show. 3,000 vehicle in which 500 is off always, 2,500. Comparatively, Bangalore or Bombay, it is where nothing. I, I, I agree, Bombay is there. Uh, in Bangalore, they have got about 7,000 buses. We have got here 8,000 buses. Uh, and you know, uh, as uh, uh, LA, the only the transport through buses, which is 150 lakhs per uh, day. Now it was reduced after pandemic. It is some some 30 lakhs to 35 lakhs. Not e not even the EMU electro I mean, only four four percent of the train only tra tra travel. Now, as as regards CMRL, it is it is good. It should expand. But the problem is. A coolie cannot travel in the train. See, my wages is about 800 rupees. I, I am a carpenter. I go there, but see, I have to pay. It was previously 10 rupees basic, and it was 70 up. After a great struggle, we brought up to from 10 to 50. 50 rupees is the maximum limit. So it is a, It's not a lavish. See, the government should view that, not because you invest some 60,000 crores or 65,000 crores. That you should not see that at that angle. The poor worker, you should be able to travel in the train. At five rupees EMU in from uh, or ten rupees up to beach or five rupees from particular station to particular. Mostly five or ten. It is this. only a public transport should cost less. Then only people will uh, will uh, have more number. Will, will grow in that. That's why EMU uh, in EMU people were going. Here, here, when you are from developing the transport, first you should see the cost. You should, you should not simply say that uh, uh, the, because it is air condition, because it is uh, 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 the, something is very, very costly. It is not like that. So it should be open for poor. Then we need in Madras the Kumta that 15 years it was kept in cold storage. Now only it is some something coming up that too not in full swing. People, I should not go and take tickets in three. Uh, I may travel in three more, three uh, more. Just, like, just getting them, I can see uh, purchasing a ticket. I should travel. That is what the Kumta envisaged, but that was not implemented. And now they say they are doing it, doing it. In turn, railways not cooperating. I, I can very well say because their accounting system is some problem. They don't see uh, eye, eye to eye with this. Uh, so then they say they have been telling they will uh, at least uh, to uh, commence with the MTC. Then they do some small package, then leave it. So 
you may, unless the public transport is uh, uh, guided with kumta properly the, the, the people will be put into disadvantages then such a city like madras what is wrong in bringing brt the mtc took our use some one and a half two years before every time they come and go <clears throat> we have been taking, at least you know the buses in chennai traveling out 11 to 12 kilometer speed only in uh, mount road and other places so if you want to have a faster transport and you they, you should aim at what are what are the bottleneck and the one one solution is brt so that is that is still not that, that is the that is for the duty to uh, government to the kumta should work for it and uh, all the allied agencies involved in that should press for it we should have uh, implemented 10 years before at least it should be even before cmr there is uh, uh, not so much of investment compared to CMRL. The BRT can be easily, and it can carry more passengers even than CMRL. Now, well, coming to CMRL, to one minute. Coming to CMRL, it should it should take seven lakhs of people per day. But now it is not even touching one and a half or two lakhs. Two lakhs never touch only in some rare some function functional days only. So the, the because you know because of the fact I consider because of the fact fact should be brought down and more people are allowed to travel in that it is a public transport that's why when you when when you do like that then only the cars and two wheelers will the, the middle class and the lower middle class will abandon this vehicle to the extent that it's coming up to the station another point connectivity now I am in Nangalore Road Nangalore there is Nangalore Road. There is no connectivity between the station and the uh, station. It is about three kilometers. Uh, Atawala charges 100 rupees. See, the, uh, how can I uh, venture to travel to go, uh, go to the station? And they say we have got one 82, uh, some number bus, one uh, bus, 45 minutes that goes from Alandur to this Nanganlur, this part of the city. So the part of that. So it will take 45 minutes. Another ride will take 45 minutes. So even though we say I have provided connectivity, it is not real connectivity. It is at least every 15 minutes, not only for this area, I mean to every area. Otherwise, people will not be standing. They will try to get auto or two-wheeler or car, some other mode of transport only. Because I want to go to office, everything fixed. I want to, when I don't get that, then people switch over. This is the way. People are now struggling in, in Chennai. We want a better uh, transport, but the government has not uh, uh, applied its mind to bring all these certain radical measures for public. Otherwise, they are allowing cars and there is no parking and there is a big problem in every street. The street parking is coming. Then the, the commissioners are saying, I will charge for that also. It's a foolish thing. You have got uh, money to purchase a vehicle, but you don't have money to park. If you don't park, don't do it. In Simla, you are only uh, a session house officer agree with, uh, uh, signs for it, you will be able to purchase a car. You block at the source itself. Your car should not be sold unless the, uh, the, that, uh, that man who purchased the vehicle should produce a certificate that he has got He's in his own apartment uh, to our house to, uh, uh, to park his vehicle. So such radical changes are required. Otherwise, everybody will purchase the car for the EMU. By last car, I will purchase in EMU, and every street will be. So that will be some check by the government. And that are, these measures we have been telling and talking, and it is only in talk. Nothing is getting implemented. This is my so preliminary view. Some, some of the things that we talked about, about cost integration, about last mile connectivity. So, so I specifically, specifically sort of want to get your thoughts on uh, what do you what do you think about the proposed sort of uh, CMRL takeover of the MRTS and uh, so uh, do you have any sort of suggestions uh, that be implemented or do you have any apprehensions about such a move? Uh... And, uh, follow up. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so the CMRL uh, uh, taking over the MRTS operations, sir. So uh, do you have oh. any specific thoughts on on? My this? only fear, yes. Uh, previously, there was some accounting problem between this agency. We I, I, we don't bother. But one thing, after takeover, it will be CMRL. Now I pay five rupees and travel. Uh, if if CMRL is converted, I fear the rates may go up. Services. 
see uh, the service more or less same uh, maybe uh, the timing is uh, uh, from velachery to uh, beach station i travel in uh, th 30 minutes time so um, not, not much of a change maybe by 20 minutes or 5 to 10 minutes but i pay only 5 rupees and if uh, uh, what do you call if you convert it to cmrl then i have to pay more the, otherwise uh, there is nothing wrong in interest fair my question is mostly fair because a public point of view my, my the average income of a citizen in kanjipuram district as per government record it is 90 90 only per day so when so, so, there are poor people rich people middle everything is there but you should go below the uh, and see that he is able to pay the cost so cmrl without uh, mrs take over as it is it is okay fair should not be changed it should continue and the present stay uh, fair also should be brought down thank you thank you for sharing your uh, thoughts on this so we have some questions in the chat box that i'll uh, just post to the panel at large if anybody wants to take and uh, we'll take a couple of questions and we'll close i'm uh, we're a little bit over the time that i mentioned uh, my apologies for that uh vaishnavi has uh, raised a question about any move to make transport data public and accessible is there any uh, uh, a move towards making this uh, accessible to everyone if uh, anybody in the panel wants to uh, answer this question yeah i can take that question so uh, currently i'm not very clear on what plan is there under kumta because the transport data ownership lies with the respective departments and recently mdc has made its data public to a large extent at least with respect to the uh, bus services uh, cmrl data uh, only static data is available right now in the gdps format it's not dynamic data uh, so once kumta comes in if they are integrating uh, Uh, the data information as well like i said the three kinds of integration right fair integration uh, uh, physical integration information integration once that happens that should be made uh, public like vaishnavi said and ideally uh, everybody should be able to plan trips based on the information available but currently like i said the ownership lies with respective departments uh, at one point that ownership needs to sort of transfer to kumta and then they should be able to take that call another question that's come up uh, is regarding uh, uh, is if any of our metro systems are profitable and as an addendum like uh, should profit even be a consideration when we are looking at large public transport systems uh, at all i can take the question as well so uh, recently the ministry of housing and urban affairs submitted a appraisal report to the lok sabha uh, last sorry uh, lok sabha recently and that had a list of various metro departments breaking even it's not about talking about profit Uh, itself just breaking even in terms of fare box revenue that's only mumbai and delhi right now no other metro is making or even breaking even uh, at this particular moment but uh, like you mentioned uh, any public transport system the idea is not to make profits uh, because uh, like i think mr gopal mentioned earlier uh, when a city has public and private transport running parallelly private transport will operate only on routes that are profitable they won't operate on routes that need service and public transport essentially becomes a service for the public uh and it, it enables economic movement of the people itself so it can't be looked at as a profit making mechanism but at the same time uh when you look at it as taxpayers money the cost efficiency needs to be calculated like for the amount of investment put into metro what is the public good we are getting what is public benefit we are getting that's a question needs to be answered for which currently uh, uh from uh, what i know there is no analysis yet another point another point that strikes me is uh, like for instance to assess the success of your investment in terms of mobility uh the singapore example they have the land transport authority actually has targets like if it takes so much time this year to go from point a to point b during peak hour next year it should be so much less so basically they have a quantified the way of uh, assessing whether uh, commuting time is reduced so they all the measures are taken from that perspective so they measure it like that so which actually is a very uh, concrete measure and it shows that actually real speeds are increasing and uh, people who are taking buses and trains are able to get to their destinations faster so this is a very good uh, you know proxy to say that you have actually succeeded with your system so i think that that should be also built into uh, uh, these uh, our calculations and i think we should do annual surveys uh, among the user public to find out what they think about the system this is actually left out 
so of course there are people uh, you know who are in specialized uh, you know organizations and bodies but the average commuter has no knowledge of where to go if he wants to uh, you know make known his view so it's completely sc scattered as a user system so i think we should uh, bring some kind of organization to uh, you know bear on this so that we are able to participate in an organized structured survey every year which will be published so this will uh, put pressure on the systems also to operate uh, better whether it's rail or bus or uh, feeder transport so i think uh, th these are other ways in which uh, you can measure the success of your investment and just to add one more point uh, and also because there was a couple of questions about the gross cost model itself uh, singapore is a good example of gross cost model because the bus service there operates on a gross cost basis uh, but still they are able to maintain the performance because the uh, money that is going from the government to the operator it's linked to certain performance it's called the performance linked indicators and those clearly outline what level of performance the service provider needs to meet and uh, they will have extra incentives if they meet up beyond the uh, indicator itself but uh, anything below indicator is not taken as acceptable the the, the contract might be cancelled so uh, by up, taking such an approach we'll be able to achieve uh, a good level of service even if it's a uh, we are going towards gross cost model but that takes a lot of uh, preparatory work from the government side to ensure the success but i think there might be a difference between uh, that what we are talking about and their model because there i think since 2014 it's the government that owns the buses whereas here i don't know if that will be the case their idea is not to invest uh, their own money in uh, you know these buses except for uh, those that are now being i think uh, proposed under giz financing i'm not sure about it but this is what i read so perhaps you have uh, you know a better picture of that no uh, the csl uh, bus tenders um... Uh, that system, everything is owned, uh, maintained, operated completely by whoever has won the tender, which in this case uh, for the first uh, tranche is uh, Tata Motors. Uh, the government is only paying, you know, uh, whatever per kilometer, etc. So in a way, it's kind of hiding off all responsibility whatsoever. How that plays out, we'll have to wait and see. I think uh, that's pretty much we've covered all the questions in the chat box and anything that uh, the other audience has raised as well. So uh, we're also over time. So thank you so much to the panel for joining, taking time out and sharing your experiences and, and what needs to be done uh, going forward. Uh, we'll share the recording and also a write-up of the discussion and uh, point taken about the closed captioning and the uh, uh, for future uh, webinars, uh, Vaishnavi. Thank you so much for suggesting that. Yeah, uh, thanks everyone. Have a great evening and uh, uh, please do follow the outputs from this uh, session as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.